Well, the momentum may be a little slow at the moment, but this is only the warming up lap. A graded start, as you can see, the white top on novice grade drivers right behind the pace car in the bottom of the picture. Then we move up to the yellow grade, then to the blues, and right at the very back, the star drivers, the top drivers of the sport. And the very top driver has the penalty of spending a whole season starting right behind the star men. 131 from Scotland, Gordon Brown, the reigning world champion. One of his fellow countrymen who's going to give him a run for his money today is the British champion. You can tell he's British champion by the red and, uh, I beg your pardon, black and white checkered roof. That's car number 46, Keith Jarman. He always goes very, very well indeed here at Wimbledon. 2.26, the English challenge could come from the English champion, Eddie George, getting a bit of a shunt already just to get him on his way. Well, that warming up lap is over, and now it's every man for himself. And 114 is already in trouble there. That's Martin Q from Wallington, and he's a white top driver. He's going to be well and truly down the field now. There's Gordon Brown. He'll spend a lap or two, as will Keith Jarman, of course, down at the back. He'll let the others sort themselves out. This is more or less the technique for the more experienced drivers. They'll let one or two commit Harry Carey up front, sit back a bit. But now there's a man who's a very experienced driver, Eddie Aldous, 238. Now, I'm surprised to see him getting himself in, uh, in bother so early on, but he'll soon fight his way back in. You can rest assured about that. So we've already got problems, cars out on the centre green, cars trying to turn around and rejoin on the, a very wet speedway track on the inside of the bends there. There's plenty of grip on the outside of the track if they can just find it. So let's just uh, have a look and see how we're going at the moment. 6.93 is the current leader, if you can see him going through. Malcolm Foster from Royston in half, which is 6.93 is indeed the leader. 282 comes second, 229 is third, and 454 is next. Always seems a little confusing in the early races, in the early heats rather. But they're settling down now. There's Gordon Brown, the world champion, beginning to move up. As you can see already, the front men have caught up with some of the back markers and the tail enders and those who've gone out and rejoined. Lots of iron work, as you can see on the front, therefore protection and a boy do you need it in this formula because once this thing settles down and some of the top drivers begin to get going those bumpers will be going in to push the opposition out of the way but there's gordon brown in 131 the world champion still down at the back with five laps gone we've got 229 in fact is uh, now the leader that's robert george son of the uh, english champion 226 eddie george giving Eddie Aldous 238 a bit of a shove. Eddie, of course, a back marker now. The 36 white top car of Derek Smart getting caught in there and getting a bit of a battering as he wanders about the track. He won't get a lot of patience from the other star men who are trying to get past him. That's the way to get rid of them. 270, Joe Fuller from Holston gets a shove round into the fence and is now well and truly out of it. Things beginning to settle down. 229, Robert George is the leader. Seven laps gone. Robert, the son of uh, 226, Eddie George, who viewers to World of Sport will remember was involved in that very dramatic crash at Ipswich when we were covering the Hot Rod World Championships in the summer when the whole of the roof of the car was crushed down to door level. But he recovered and he's back out there racing again today. A little bit of moisture in that shale causing him to drift out wide as the leader just pokes his way through on the inside. So, 229. Robert George still there, still comfortably in the lead. 693 got himself a bit entangled at the back by the look of it. Oh, he's got free. His rear bumper caught up on the cables of the fence. That was Malcolm Foskett who went earlier. There's Keith Jarman in 46 from Scotland, the British champion. A little way back at the moment. 229 is the leader. 591 is in second place, Jeff Morris. Third is the 156 car of Ray Gowdy. So that's the they're the placings at the moment. That's the second place man, the 591 car, Jeff Morris. 229, in fact, I think has been moved back while things were happening there. Yes, on the 10-lap marker. Robert George gets himself back and finds a little bit more bother as well. But it's now 591 who's the lead. <laughs> well, that's one way of doing it, I suppose. The main object of the exercise there, of course, is to get out of trouble rather than to find it. And one man who's always very 
able to find trouble is Eddie Alderson, 238. And he's got himself some problems there because you can see that infield is very, very wet indeed. There's absolutely no grip. And, of course, the problem is that muck comes up off onto the tarmac and that makes the going on the tarmac very difficult. There's 591 drifting through the inside, passing that 36 back marker car of Derek Smart. The lap's ticking away. 12 laps gone. We're just about on halfway now. And it's still 591 who's the leader, Jeff Morris. 229 Robert George is second. 148 is in third place, Eric Moore. Keith Jarman there, still a long way back. Finding the going a bit difficult today. I really expected the Scotsman actually to be up there a little bit more competitive. But at the moment, they just don't seem to make the going. 46 Keith Jarman, I'm looking at the lap sheet. It's about 12 in 12th place, a long way back. I know he had the penalty of starting at the back, but that's where he still is. And there's Gordon Brown, and he's still a long way out of the placings as well. Here they come, still 5.91, Jeff Morris in the lead. 2.29, Robert George is still second. 2.70, a back marker there. But uh, in this particular sport, the back markers are quite happy to harry the leader if they find he's coming past, and they can settle an old score and hook a bumper as he comes past. Well, they're quite pleased to do that. The second place, 229, Robert George. 275, in fact, is now moving up into third place. So that's 229. 148 is third, 275 is fourth, 89 is now fifth, then 151 and 131. But still the inside of those two cars in the lead. 270 is a back marker. He's got himself quite a reasonable lead now. As we come towards the closing stages, I think the others will begin to close up. It's the same old problem we see in all kinds of stock car racing on a small quarter-mile circuit. Once you begin to catch up with the slow guys, they can hold you up and give your opposition a chance to get rid of a nice, comfortable margin that you may well have built up. And then the pressure's on to go by, and that's where the mistakes can come in. 5.91, Jeff Morris is still there. 2.29, Robert George is second. 148 and 275, been dicing a little to determine the next place is Dinky Dalton in 275, now going up to challenge. And I think Robert George must have got uh, some problems there because he's giving up that second place relatively easily, and then that's not really in his nature. Gordon Brown, the world champion there, amongst the back markers, now being caught up by this leading group of cars. Couple of back markers, 266, Dave Shepard and that 270 car that keeps going round Joe Fuller. But they're some way behind as we get to the point where there's just five more laps to go. There's 229 Robert George. 591 is still the leader. 275 has now moved into second place. Dinky Dalton is second in 225. 89 has now gone third, Bill Stewart. And 229 Robert George is down to fourth with 148 and 151 tucked in behind. So there's 591, Jeff Morris from Maidenhead. Experienced star, great driver. He's managed to battle his way through from the back quite well. He has got a comfortable lead of some uh, 40 or 50 yards now, indeed, on 275. And there's the world champion getting a bit of a battering there. Really not finding uh, himself very much at home on this particular surface. That's it, in goes that bumper. He wants him out of the way because he's holding him up. And Dickie Dalton's got a lot to do in 275 if he wants any chance at all of getting up on terms with the 591 car in the lead. Well, that's one back marker he's disposed of, 131, as long as he doesn't decide to come back and try and hook him out in a moment. A little undignified for the world champion to be lapped, but there we are, it does happen. Here's the leader again. He really has done very well. A comfortable lead, a good cushion there to keep the rest of them away from him. Just going to keep himself out of trouble from back markers who are liable to do silly things. No, Dave Lee in 454. Yes, you see, there's Dave Lee. He's not averse to either drifting accidentally into him or maybe deliberately having a little nudge. So 591 there on the right, the lead car. A couple more laps to go now. There's uh, Starman Ray Gowdy some way back in 556. 776 is uh, Tony Jones. He's a long way behind as well. Still 591 from 275 and 89 in third place, Bill Stewart. But this is the man who's in the lead now, inside the final lap. And he's going to take this one very comfortably. No real problems for him at all as he comes off the final bend and into the home straight for the last time. There's the chequered flag for him. 591, Jeff 
Morris is the winner. And we've got a little wait while we look for 275 to come through and to take the second place. Oh, what's he going to do? He's going to get rid of 36 just for just for the fun of it as he goes over the line to take second. And the third place man we're looking for is the 89 car just gone over the line there, the 89 car of uh, Bill Stewart. So that's the man who's come out top of the heap on this one from Maidenhead in Berkshire, 591 Jeff Morris. Second was 275 Dinky Dalton and 89 third place Bill Stewart.